Let me preface this video by saying that when I initially wrote the script, I was pretty sick, which means that my filter was pretty shot. So if this video comes off as especially salty or rambly, then that's why. I could have fixed the script, but I thought it was much more entertaining this way. If you're familiar with my videos, then you likely know my feelings on The Fourth Closet and the Five Nights at Freddy's novel trilogy as a whole. The Silver Eyes was a safe and formulaic, but otherwise totally serviceable novel. The Twisted Ones was a train wreck both in characterization and structure, and The Fourth Closet was a flaming wreckage after the fact. It's hard to pin which I think had the most problems, The Twisted Ones or The Fourth Closet. In a way, I feel like they're a package deal, so why compare? One of the Twisted One's biggest sins was the flanderization and otherwise butchering of the novel's main character, Charlie Emily. The Fourth Closet does Charlie a little better, if only because it downgrades her from the main protagonist to the object of the main protagonist's desires. It treats her as an item. But that doesn't mean that The Fourth Closet doesn't butcher its own characters, and we should look no further than the character referred to as Circus Baby also known as Fourth Charlie, Adult Charlie, Not Charlie, Hot Charlie, and pretty much never as Elizabeth Afton, who you may recognize as Circus Baby in the games. You're not likely to recognize her in this book, though. So, who is Circus Baby? In the game, Circus Baby is a creation of William Afton's, a massive clown animatronic built with hidden features to aid in his kidnapping and slaughter of children under the guise of being a for-hire party entertainer. She is possessed by his daughter, Elizabeth Afton, after she gets too close at a party and is swallowed whole. Baby is soft-spoken and calm, coming off as a gentle and helpful person, but in reality, Baby is a manipulative pretender who uses a guise of innocence to coerce others into helping her, and even sacrificing their lives for her. She is cold and self-serving, but this is caused by a mixture of things. Her backstory, the death of Elizabeth, her creator's sick desires being built to kill, and her surroundings being kept in servitude and often shocked and tortured. Baby in the novels is both a lot more convoluted and a lot less complex. Charlie Emily IV, also referred to as Baby, is the adult form of Charlie Emily, the daughter of Henry Emily and former business partner of William Afton. After Charlie was killed by William, Henry decided to rebuild Charlie in the form of androids. He built a toddler, a child, and a teen. But while he was building the adult form, he became consumed by anger and hatred for his creation and gave up on her, locking her away. Then William stole her. When he was making adjustments to her, William's poorly treated daughter, Elizabeth, ended up becoming fixated on her because she was the target of William's attention, wanting to be her. One night, she snuck in to see her, and adult Charlie then grabbed and crushed Elizabeth inside of her, and the two became the same person. Then Henry ended up getting adult Charlie back and locking her away in a closet in a pizzeria in the basement underneath his house. Then, yes, then Afton, now Springtrap, ended up getting her again and woke her up, coercing her into being subservient to him. So, in short, this character is Charlie Emily, Circus Baby, and Elizabeth Afton all at once. And while it is explained in the book, it always feels that disjointed. But before I get into the proper issues with Circus Charlie Beth Emily Afton, let's discuss what she actually does in the book. Introduced at the end of The Twisted Ones after Charlie is believed to have died, Baby appears at the diner to greet Charlie's friends dressed up in a skin-tight red dress and looking significantly older. John is the only one who realizes this isn't Charlie. In the fourth closet, Baby continues to pretend to be Charlie, going out with John, hanging out with Jessica, and generally acting nothing like Charlie. Eventually, after Circus Babies opens in town and her friends become a little more suspicious, Baby starts to show her real colors. She is behind an attack on Police Chief Clay Burke and is disappointed when he survives, and acts defensive and aggressive around the others while they investigate. And eventually, she even kidnaps Jessica for Afton, forcing her to perform surgery on him. She also kills Charlie's Aunt Jen while John and Jessica find the real Charlie's body stashed in a chest. Why? So she's out of the way for when they have a confrontation here later. Of course. At the end of the book, while all the side characters are defeating the real bad guy, Afton, and saving the kids, Baby confronts the real Charlie and John. During the confrontation, she knocks John out with a kiss, drops a steaming info dump onto Charlie, and stabs her arm through her stomach to yank out her internal ragdoll. But Baby is defeated by Charlie using Henry's Off Myself bot to stab through the both of them with the steel short sword. Charlie and Baby die. 
Except at the end of the book, a mysterious woman appears. In the graphic novel, it is hinted or confirmed to be Charlie in her fourth adult body. The end. Now, obviously I trimmed that down, but a lot of Baby's time is broken up between long periods of her telling people about her extensive backstory, which admittedly would take a pretty long time to explain, and weird moments of her getting flirty with John or just acting like, well, not like Charlie, but like a very boring person. Let's break down all the problems with this variation of Baby. I would like to start with the thing that is the most notable, the thing that I have mentioned countless times, but the thing that is, in the grand scheme of things, not the biggest issue with Baby. Let me get this out of the way fast. Baby's weird sexualization. How this character, this child-shaped clown character, became this scantily dressed, thick-thighed, long-legged, model-faced creature is beyond me. The graphic novel tones us down a little bit, but it doesn't do much to change the fact that your main villain is running around in a skimpy red dress being referred to by many characters as being sexy, or actively coming on to them as hard as she can. I mean, you can have a character do this, but why this one? Now, I'm no stranger to femme fatales, but this is the first time I've seen a femme fatale who is canonically possessed by a young child. Especially since in the storyline itself, Baby doesn't need to be like this. Charlie is not overtly flirtatious or girly, so all it does is give away that she doesn't act anything like the real Charlie and that nobody notices. It is done for another reason that I will get into later, but just know it fails. Now, the graphic novel, as I said, tones her design down a little both in Charlie and Baby form, but it doesn't stop them from posing her in purposefully coquettish ways. But this makes sense. I mean, remember that part of Sister Location where Baby pressed herself up on the glass and sent bedroom eyes at her brother? No? Oh right, that didn't happen. So, I think the reason I bring up the sexiness thing so readily, other than the fact that it makes no sense in the story, is that it's such a detachment from her character in the games that it's sort of hilarious. In fact, the implications it presents, that Henry built his daughter to be like this, especially in the graphic novel that hilariously implies that he picked out their clothing, even though Charlie is shown changing clothes, are very uncomfortable. And it's all this that causes novel baby to lean from being sexy to sexualized. See, a character can be sexy and flirtatious and not be specifically sexualized, but Baby's inconsistent behavior and purposeful design comes off as less like a benefit for the story and character and more just... odd. Especially adding all the creepy context about Baby being a girl constantly tossed back and forth between two fathers, both of which who designed her to appeal to the lingering gaze. And let me add here that if the story did address this, then it would have had a greater purpose. The reason it's bothersome is that there's little solid narrative reason for it. It should be known that this isn't the only time a baby variation has been designed like this. Eleanor's design is purposefully a skinny baby with some notable features up top. But it's not too bad. Unless we're talking about this Eleanor. Streetwalker baby. And I'm not against breasts. I am a woman who can admire a nice chest. It is, again, all of the weird implications surrounding it that makes it feel so wrong. The biggest being that we should not be sexualizing the toddler clown. But like I said earlier, this is not the biggest issue with Baby, especially not in this book. It's just the only issue that you can see visually and thus don't have to read the book to spot the difference. Now let's get into Baby's behavior. We'll go into every faction of it, but let's start with the most important part. Baby's main goal in the book is an antagonistic foil to Charlie. Well, not quite to Charlie, but to the characters. She steals Charlie's identity and gets in the way of her friends finding her, trying to erase her. But Baby is the world's worst actress. Her sole goal is to act like Charlie, but she acts nothing like her, doesn't dress like her, makes no attempt to cover up that she isn't her. And it's only through contagious mass stupidity that she fools everyone for so long. I can't express this enough. Baby barely hides that she's not the real Charlie going so far as to insult and cryptically hint about her. Why? Well, there's no real reason why, because it's never established what her modem operandum is. What does she want? Well, seemingly to replace Charlie and serve Afton, who she is aware isn't her father. While she does the latter until she kind of deviates from that plot, she does the former really badly. There's a reason for this, and I'll get into it later. Though Baby is obedient to Afton and does everything he tells her to, including likely everything she does to Charlie's friends, the book does seem to regularly imply and at once directly states that this act might be legit. 
That is, Baby truly does want to replace Charlie and absorb her life. She wants what she could never have. Though there are scenes that seem to go against this, along with her loyalty towards Afton and specifically her encounter with the trapped Jessica. But of her feverish insistence that she's better, it does seem to truly bother her that Charlie got something she didn't. Maybe. And I say maybe because Baby herself is a little inconsistent. At times, she wildly swings into cartoonishly evil before reining it back in long enough to deliver more of her sob story. At times, the book seems unsure of whether it wants to commit to true villain Baby or sympathetic Baby. And while you can have a sympathetic but irredeemable villain, the issue with Baby is that it seems to sort of flop back and forth depending on the scene. Though on the whole, the book leans more towards the sympathetic approach, specifically once it gets close to the end and she fully comes into the Charlie persona before they fuse. At times, it even seems to frame Baby as being in the right. Though I do feel like that's an unintentional message brought on by the pacing and exposition. For example, Baby's tangents towards Charlie near the end of the book, where Charlie is unable to say really anything in her own defense. In fact, when anyone goes up against Baby during one of her monologue moments, they seem unable to say anything of value while she prattles on about herself. I think this is to give the illusion that Baby is smarter or deeper than she is, but it just makes everyone else seem very doll-like and dull. And though long monologues may be in character in Sister Location, Sister Location Baby had an ability to better use these sob stories in her favor, usually to gain the trust of her target. But in the book, she monologues for monologuing's sake. She's not trying to win anyone over, such as with Jessica, who she's threatening at the same time she's venting at her. Baby's whole relationship with Jessica is very odd, by which I mean, it is not in character for Jessica to believe that Baby is Charlie. She knows Charlie better than anyone else, so she should naturally know something is up here. So in the beginning of the book, they're friendly in a non-specific way until Jessica suddenly regains her sanity, and at that point, Baby pretty much starts treating Jessica like the last few months of being buddy-buddy never happened. That is, until she kidnaps her and info dumps on her. She has some notable encounters with Carlton, or at least one where she gets threatening flirty while he's snooping around the apartment. It should be noted that it is Carlton who gives her the name Hot Charlie, and it is often distracted by her sexiness, clearly attracted to her. Now that is kind of interesting, because Carlton is the main character in The Fourth Closet, no doubt about that. He's the one who defeats Afton, saves the children, has the most impactful encounter with Afton in the first book, the only one other than Charlene who knows how Springlocks work, the one with the fully fleshed out family, his father being a notable character, and let me repeat again, he defeats Afton, meets the ghost kids, he's the one who does this, he's the only one who does this, and saves them practically alone. I often joke about Carlton being the character who the writers actually wanted to be the main character. Well, I can't recall ever doing it in a video, but at least I joke about it to myself, like the crawlspace golem that I am. But this added addition of having this weird attraction to adult Charlie and Baby having these encounters with both John and Carlton makes me even more convinced that Carlton should have just been the secondary protagonist and Charlie's love interest instead of John. At least they might have had more chemistry. By the way, Baby's interactions with John, her supposed love interest, are almost always some variation of an info dump. She pretends badly, comes on hard, he resists until he tries to act like he's into her to get information, and she pretty much gives him confirmation with how sketchy and cryptically she constantly acts. John doesn't have chemistry with Charlie unless he's being her caretaker, or the admittedly better take in the Twisted Ones graphic novel, so his chemistry with Baby also flatlines. It's awkward. And it's supposed to be awkward, but it's also boring. And while I'm not that into Baby doing the seductive, dangerous thing, at least her encounters with Carlton are tense. Now, you would think Baby's relationship with Afton would be a little more complex, but it really isn't. Most of the time, the two are nowhere near each other until Baby's back on the clock and has to come home to tend to Peepaw Afton's whims. The most notable moment between them in the book, other than the saw surgery scene, is the moment where William's telling Baby about creating animatronics and amalgams and building up how advanced she is. You know, for someone as self-serving as Afton, you would think that he wouldn't take so much pride in a creation that he largely didn't create. In the games, Will 
built Baby from the ground up, and that's why he had so much attachment to her. In this, he just stole her from Henry at random, put a metal womb in her to kill kids, and then lost her until later. Though I won't say this isn't in character, Afton does strike me as the stuck-in-a-delusional self-grandeur type. Of course, none of these characters should be as important as Baby's relationship with Charlie. After all, Charlie is her rival, she is her foil, and the two are created to be counterparts of each other. Their fathers butted heads, and now they, their daughters, take up the mantle in the great evil Afton Angelic Emily dispute. So what is Baby's relationship with the real Charlie like? Okay, remember what feels like 20 minutes ago when I said that Baby frequently acts inconsistent and there is a reason? Well, yeah, here's the reason. Baby is set up to be a foil for Charlie, so to do that, the book has her be everything that Charlie isn't. Elegant, collected, sexy, mature, she acts like a real grown-up woman. She tries to seduce John and makes sure Charlie eventually knows about it, baiting how she wants him. Setting up this love triangle between three that doesn't exist because there's no chemistry with any of them. It's like a high school mean girl character trope. And yes, you might have noticed that this behavior goes directly against Baby's long-term goals of replacing Charlie, as I've stated at least three times now, because she doesn't act or dress anything like her. But that's not important. The important part was showing the differences between Charlie and Baby. And since this is the only book where Charlie becomes a doormat, and since Baby keeps flip-flopping, the only way they can do that is through surface-level junk. She wears high heels, I wear combat boots, she wears lipstick, I look half dead. And don't let my joking downplay this. <laughs> there is absolutely no rival chemistry between Charlie and Baby, and this is mostly because the two don't share more than a shred of book time together. And it's also because when they are together, their time is devoted largely to Baby telling Charlie about the whole robot thing. Their last encounter, the big finale, to the trilogy, is so, so listless and boring. The fact that it takes place entirely separated from the main plot involving Afton and the children's souls, and simply involves Baby confronting John and Charlie at a relatively normal house, taking John out quickly, and then Charlie taking the way of the martyr and taking her and the obviously dumb Baby out with her father's own weapon, it feels like a bit of a letdown when you consider that they were building two books to get here. And that's the problem. In theory, Charlie and Baby's relationship should and could be complex, but it's acted upon in such a shallow way. Just the fact that through most of the book they have no interaction, and when they do finally meet up, their encounter is more serviceable than anything is a disservice to the idea. It's a war against self, against the image of what you're supposed to be, against your own stolen identity. But when the two are together, they're too busy talking about daddy, one of them, to really break down their feelings about each other deeper than a surface level. Charlie being an outdated robot confronting the next her, one who is made with the perfection that she herself is deemed to lack, therefore making her more self-conscious about her own creation, could lead to a tense situation. If Baby could succeed in spreading doubts in Charlie, or there could be a greater confrontation at a better location, this whole thing could have been way more colorful. It's just that it's so stale, so minimal. The book spends so much time building to a reveal that we already know the truth about, that once it gets to where it can do something with it, it kills off both very quickly, and then it stops. And ends with either Charlie reclaiming her future body, therefore throwing the largely sympathetic baby into limbo, or the two fusing, rewarding the cruel and despicable baby. And this choice wouldn't be so noticeable if not for the previous flip-flopping that I mentioned. A line here or there doesn't elicit sympathy, you know. And here's the thing. I'm not against sympathetic baby. I'm not against going past I pretend and manipulate and going into the complex tragedy surrounding circus baby. Sister locations set up everything for baby to be both an irredeemable villain and having enough tragedy surrounding her that you could very well dive further into that. Heck, I'd argue that you could redeem baby. It's not that hard if you put in the work to establish why she does what she does. You know what this reminds me of? Spoiler alert for Bioshock 2, but the sad ending of Bioshock 2. In that game, you play as the alpha big daddy trying to rescue your now older daughter, or little sister, Eleanor. Depending on your decisions, Eleanor either becomes helpful and benevolent, or self-serving and corrupted. Basically good or evil. In this way, Eleanor is very much like novel baby. She is being guided by her father, or father figure, into doing cruel things. 
to the point where she sees them as a necessary sacrifice or pure indulgence. It's okay if it's for her, considering how much she's been through, and like Baby, Dark Route Eleanor does hold her trauma as a shield for any morality questioning. I hurt, so I may hurt others. On the path to one of the bad endings, you can either offer up yourself to Eleanor, where you will become part of her and continue guiding her, or refuse. If you become part of her, she becomes the harbinger of a new kind of evil. With her powers and with her father's blessing, she may be unstoppable. Yet if you refuse, you stare up into that cold face and watch as it breaks in front of you. You are choosing to die. It is an uncharacteristically selfless decision, one that leaves Eleanor questioning herself. She drags you to the water to sit with her, and she begins to cry. Eleanor acknowledges that you have given her her freedom to choose, but she wonders if there is any redemption for her. Now that you have shown her you can change, she asks if she can too. And then you finally succumb. Her last words being, And Father, wherever you are, I miss you. There's something about this ending that has always sat with me. There's so many complexities with it, being notably gray. That Eleanor is set up to be evil because of your actions, only to be cut loose, and in that moment, she becomes more of a person than in either the good or bad endings. The ability to recognize that she might not be what she wants. To acknowledge her own feelings when she, for so long, has just went forward with what her father wanted. It's a fantastic scene. A character like Baby could pull off a scene like that well, even if she doesn't regret in the same manner. Is something like her questioning what she wants and then her next actions reasonably following up on that could make a difference in whether you go into a scene on the edge of your seat or just flipping pages. But while the book is willing to tell us to feel bad for Baby, it's not willing to do the heavy lifting or take the risk in committing to a bold decision like having Baby have second thoughts and perhaps still steer dead ahead into her decisions. Plus, if I may, if you were going to have Baby be the final baddie and have her defeat Mark at the end of- what? And have her defeat Mark the end of Charlie as well as the end of the book, then you could have at the very least had her betray Afton. Imagine that bold direction where instead of the flip-flopping between duty and desire, Baby pulls the sister location Baby and is just leading Afton on for her own means before cutting him loose when she no longer needs him. At least then, she would be more of a viable threat when Charlie has to confront her. At this point, Charlie's just fighting John's new girlfriend. Because that's really all Novel Baby is. She sure as heck isn't Baby. She's just some chick. Well, actually, if I may. Now, on paper, the concept of fourth Charlie Circus Baby sounds like a good one. She is the other battered daughter who has been led astray. She, unlike Charlie, is aware that she is a robot and must live with her in complete form. She feels abandoned and just wants what she feels is owed to her, and in reality, sort of is. She was given partial life, but then the bottom fell out before she could get what she truly needed. And while I like manipulative Baby, I think going deeper into Baby's character and deconstructing what makes her tick, the true tragedy of her situation, and the complex relationship she could have had with her father, both loathing him and being unable to break the control he had on her, the desire to want his love, could make for a really deep story. The problem with how the fourth closet handles both of these, fourth Charlie and sympathetic baby, is that there's no nuance. It's all very shallow. Sure, there are moments where baby casually laments about being abandoned, but her actions and further behavior do not line up with these. They do not build up on these. That is, she does act like someone who's might have been abandoned, but it doesn't really feel like it's affecting anything. She just feels like Afton Flacky. Indeed, it feels like dialogue added in to spice by up a rather by the book's villain, down to the mean, sexy girl looking to steal Charlie's boyfriend approach. The story doesn't really want to deconstruct Baby, it just wants to flirt with the idea that maybe there's a deeper story beneath a book baiting a predictable twist. That is the iceberg beneath the waves, by the way. The greater reveal is not anything of depth, but just a shocking robot reveal that has no further emotional stakes. The worst part is that this fails Circus Baby's character entirely. Not Baby from the books, but Baby is the character from the FNAF franchise. It lets her down. Though I suppose that is because Novel Baby is not Circus Baby. And that's it right there. That is the problem. The Baby in the book is not Baby. And not just because she doesn't act like Circus Baby, but because in concept she is not her. Book Baby is fourth Charlie. 
Her main issue surrounds how her father, Henry, abandoned her and being used by an idolizing Afton. Her main drive is to effectively replace Charlie and become her, as she feels that she deserves it. Her main angst is, again, that she was abandoned while her subpar self, Charlie, is believed to have been the more loved child. She was built with rage while Charlie was built weird, and that's why she portrays a few neurodivergent traits. By the way, yeah, I'm going there. God, I can't believe I went there. But the only thing connecting this fourth Charlie to being baby is a connection to Elizabeth that is not utilized. Yes, she says she is also Elizabeth, but none of her goals, behaviors, anything really matches up with that backstory. I don't count the loyalty to Afton because fourth Charlie has a reason for being loyal to him already. It's just a thrown away line. Because her main lament has nothing to do with being Elizabeth and everything to do with being Charlie. Her I'm both rings hollow when one of them is so much more dominant. And I know fourth baby Circus Charlie pretty much contexts herself as Elizabeth and refers to Afton as her father, but on the flip side, she remembers things from before Elizabeth's death and vents about it as though she was present. And her main grievances are from being abandoned by Henry. In fact, her main issue with Charlie is that she's the perfect version of her. So the Elizabeth stuff is pretty skin deep. You could very well convincingly say that Baby only claims she's Afton's daughter to separate herself from the man who abandoned her, but I don't imagine that's what they were going for. It was more of a cake-and-eat-it-too consistency and readability be damned situation. The other connection being her design, half of the time. See, in order to make Baby fit to this role, they must change her body out of the oversized toddler-shaped clown that she is known to be and make her into an android that looks just like a regular human. Circus Baby's main gimmick was that she looked innocent and cutesy, but was really something much more vile. They effectively took that away, just to make it so she could also play the role as Charlie Doppelganger. And this isn't the sort of change that can be waved away like an AR skin or a model variation. She's just a woman in Circus Baby cosplay. She only vaguely looks like her, when she's supposed to look like Charlie, and she doesn't act like her either. But the look thing goes even deeper because now that they've stuck the same Elizabeth backstory onto her, there's a huge plot hole. How old is Lizzie? Maybe five, six, seven? In the games, she's pulled into a big clown animatronic who is taller than an adult human and wide enough to fit an appropriately sized stomach hatch. Then in the books, we have Lizzie getting pulled into a, what, five foot seven tall woman with a slender build, one who was not totally complete, but likely built with the same faux human organs and blood vein system than Charlie. So where is the room to capture Lizzie? It isn't there. You could say she crushed her on the way in, but at her side, there's just not enough room for those mechanics. Plus, look at it in the graphic novel. Look at it. The baby makeup is just a ruse, a costume. Novel Baby is just older Charlie who is designed to look like Baby and have part of Baby's backstory to make her a relevant character to the games because elsewise, there would be no real reason to care about this random android Sue that Henry built to be Charlie. By making her Baby, suddenly you make her a character from the games, which gives her more importance. Sort of like how Charlie was suddenly revealed to be the puppet in the games without any further context or reason, just to have a tie-in with the books. They are not ingrained into either material other than surface level, and all it does is make these glaring issues way more apparent. This is why the book effectively ends with Baby and Charlie becoming one in the final Charlie. Because it just isn't Baby and was always just a part of Charlie. And that's the problem with Circus Baby in the novels. She's not Circus Baby. And I don't mean not in personality, not in looks, not in role. I mean it completely literally. She is not Baby. Straight up. Thank you for watching.